So I just asked if I could use the bathroom and this nice man is going to take me to there. He said just do it here. Where did you get a lion's head from? Is that legal? What kind of meat is this? This is an example of the sewage I was talking about. So that's a house. There's the pipe. This is fresh crocodile skin. This is a crocodile's back. This is from a python. So what kind of threats could there possibly be? Take our phones or to take our money from okay. us. Yeah. Is that quite common here? So we got the liver, the heart and the intestine. All right, cheers man. Take care. Bye. A guy just came up to me and he said, why are you snapping people? Who gave you permission? He prays that God takes you back home safely. We just got shut down for filming. Okay, okay. Cheers, man. All right. Don't have words to describe what I'm witnessing right now. I don't think I really need words. It is rich in resources. It's got Africa's biggest population and it's enjoyed democracy since 1999. But kidnappers are demanding money. If you pay ransoms, kidnapping continues. Over 100 students kidnapped from a school in Nigeria's Kaduna state. Armed groups have killed more than 36,000 people in the past 10 years. The only way to end kidnapping is for society to take a stand that we will not pay. Burdened by inflation, economic stagnation. Despite being Africa's largest economy, it does have high unemployment at more than 33%. Credible and disturbing evidence that Nigerian security forces shot and killed at least 12 people, taking part in peaceful protests last night in the country's largest city, Lagos. A city in chaos. Across Lagos, buildings have been torched. Mass kidnappings, attacks by armed groups and criminal gangs, corruption and a lack of jobs. So where does Nigeria go from here? Nigeria. Many people would think of scammers, kidnapping and violence when they hear the name Nigeria. But how frequent are such events? Shall we go, put our feet in the dirt and see what it's like for ourselves? I think so. Africa's most populous country. <laughs> Known for kidnapping for ransom. What's the price? The price of this one is 1,000. Money, money! Oh, A city in chaos. Yes, I'm watching. Don't have words. Okay. Demoralize it. Assalamu alaikum. So welcome back to Nigeria. Here we are in Kanu. Kanu is the second biggest city in the whole of Nigeria and the capital basically of the north of Nigeria, the biggest city in the north by far. Here behind me you can see the mosque. This car park here was actually the site of a horrific terrorist attack. In 2014 there were 400 people injured uh, terrorists came in these front gates and just unloaded bullets into people after a, a praying session here at the mosque. Dozens and dozens of people were killed sadly, so this car park right here has a very dark recent past. Dozens of people have been killed and perhaps hundreds injured in a suicide bomb and gun attack on the central mosque in North Nigeria's biggest city, Kano. It bears the hallmarks of Boko Haram militants, whose targets have included mosques they don't agree with. Reports say one or more bombs went off before armed men fired on worshippers trying to flee. But we did talk to a few people around the city and they did say that the security situation here is significantly improved. We're going to explore this city today. On the outskirts and in the highways, apparently still people are getting kidnapped. A guy I spoke to in the last video told me every fortnight, every two weeks, somebody is kidnapped. So pretty uh, intense, but we'll see what this city's like. We're going to head off to a market now. So let's go explore the city of Kanu. Get the fresh meat. Uh, fresh meat? Yes. Okay. okay, so we've just arrived at this butcher's market here, downtown Kano. Absolutely 
insanely intense situation here. Just guys with. Uh, hey, how are you? How much? You good, good. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your name? My name is yeah. Mubarak. Say again? Mubarak. 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 Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Nick. Nick. Oh, Nick, you are yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Nick. Okay, Nick. Cheers, man. All right. Corona, Corona. Bye-bye. Wow. See the, well the locals are very welcoming. Ooh, ooh. Ah, okay. We just got shut down for filming. We require for the due discharge of my duties as a What animal is this? This is a cow. A cow. Yeah, it's a big a cow. Yeah, a cow. I don't know what to do. I don't know. So we got the liver, the heart, and the intestine here. Do you sell a lot of this? In the market, sometimes you see make from 20,000 up to 100,000. A day? A day. Oh, yeah, okay. it depends on how the market is in a day. And do you like to eat this? Uh, yes, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Talk now. Okay. Yes. Come on, pipe. Yes, but I mean, that like five years ago, the market was booming, not like now because the economy is so hard now. So not many people buy a lot of stuff. So if less people are buying food from you, then what are they eating instead? Because they have like alternative to get fish because fish is cheaper. Tell me about Nigeria. Nigerian life now is very hard. Is there any message that you would like to tell anybody in Nigeria about if you want to improve things? Or? The leaders, they should try to focus on the, on the economy and the people because the people are really suffering. Before, like rice is not like around 5,000 naira, but now it's around 40,000 naira. So life is hard. Yeah, because of uncertainty, because of the hardship, it makes people to grow older. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, he also wants an interview. Does it? Oh, banta kai tsina a rayuwa a Kano. Ko in ce a Nigeria gaba daya da nama ya tsada. Okay. Saboda babban bukin ciki na a ce nama ya tsada. His main problem now that is concerning about is for uh, meat to become very expensive in Nigeria. Now meat is very expensive in Nigeria. Da naira dubu 100 ake sai da ita amma yanzu wallahi ta kai dubu 100. The life cow the, the life bull, it was like 100,000 naira before, but now it's like around 300,000 naira. So you can see the difference of like 200,000 naira. <laughs> Lastly, he wants the president of Nigeria to make the border open so that their market will boom like before. Right, because you were telling me earlier that they cut off like foreign trade yeah. and they tried to make everything internal, In right? Country, yeah. And that's what you were telling me was causing the inflation. inflation yeah. So they want free trade, open market. Yeah, that's what he said. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. You. All right. Cheers, man. Thank you. Take care. Bye. <laughs> If somebody wanted to buy a whole rack here, how much would it cost? 70,000 naira. Everybody wants to be interviewed and share the situation. Like people are just coming and they want to talk to the camera about the situation. It's incredible. Thank you, good he is happy to see someone like you to be in Nigeria, so he prays that God takes you back home safely, inshallah. Okay, and why why are you happy to see somebody like me here? It's because it's rare to get somebody like you in the market. Like oh, so he doesn't see many foreigners Yeah, so he's really impressive to see someone like you here. Uh, Okay. Yeah, that's why he prays that you go back home safely, inshallah. And do you think that I'm safe here? Yeah.
He says it's very normal for you to stay here. You are very safe. Okay. Yeah. Go, Thank you very much. Alright, man. Da. Being an entrepreneur now, it's like demoralizing. I've never really experienced something like this that everybody wants to be interviewed and everybody wants to come up and, uh, you know, they want to share the struggles here. Everyone I've talked to so far in the country, in the south and the north, is just talking about inflation and. Uh, the economy is crashing, according to the people I've spoken to, which is people from all different backgrounds. He is so worried about the life situation now in Nigeria because they use all their power, they use their energy, they use their money to support the present administration, the president to get into power. But when the president gets into the power, Everything changes. They, is, they, they expected something more, but what they were expecting is um, it's not what they got. So they are worried about it because life is getting more harder. What uh, if you have 1,000 naira before? It's enough for you to feed your family in a day. But now you need like around 5,000 naira to feed your family a day. You can see that uh, people are very friendly here, majority of them. But I must tell you, a guy just came up to me and he said, "Why are you snapping people? Who gave you permission?" And uh, it's funny because the people that I'm filming are asking me literally, can you film me so I can talk? So, you know, some people can be a bit abrasive and a little bit hostile, but vast majority of people here are really cool and like just uh, good vibes, you know, nice people, characters, absolutely. So I just asked if I could use the bathroom and this nice man is going to take me to there. So you can eat yourself here. Oh, just here? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I asked him if I could go to the bathroom. He said, just do it here. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, that's the reality, right? Uh, we'd spoken to other people in Nigeria and obviously, you know, this shouldn't come to, as too much of a surprise. Not every house has a toilet, so they either share toilets in the community, or they go to other people's houses, or they will uh, go on the street here. And that's how it is. This is sheepskin in the sheep background? Skin, yeah. And you're coloring, and they color it Coloring. Here. And what do they do once it's colored? Do they sell it? To sell it. Who do they sell it to? Export. Export. And what is it used for? Clothing? Luggage. Uh, shoes, okay. even shirts. Yes. You're obviously an educated man because your English is very good, right? Yeah. And so you grew up uh, in the uni you went to university here, or? Of course, yes. Okay. And what did you study? Accountancy and finance. Oh, really? Yes. And so, seeing as that you worked in accounting and finance, I spoke to a lot of people just at a market. I'm, I'm ex auditor. Auditor. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think of the current state of Nigeria considering the economy at the moment? Well, I can't say anything about the uh, Nigerian economy. I can't say anything. You don't want to? Yes. Okay, that's okay. See my my pump. Oh, this is your I'm pump. Supplying the, I'm supplying water to, to those people. You sell this? Yes. Okay. This is my water. And so how did you get... You made this yourself? In my house. I, ah. I drew water to the tunnel here. One thing I've noticed about Kanu here is there are a lot of open sewers and sometimes the uh, stench is borderline unbearable. I've uh, gagged a few times just trying to uh, convey the senses here. You can see a lot of these kind of uh, gutters here. Hey. A lot of them uh, are connected to household sewers so I even saw like sewage washing out over the uh, basically what you would call a pavement or a footpath into the drains so it's quite uh, intense. Salam alaikum. You just mentioned that you've been to England and what year did you go to England? 1993. You like England? I like Saudi Arabia. Better. You prefer Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Okay. And what is the reason for that? A religious matter. 
Oh, so you went to Mecca. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much for your time, yeah, no. Solomon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you want one? Nagodi. Nagodi. Ciao, ciao. Stop joining. This is an example of the sewage I was talking about. So that's a house. There's the pipe come straight out of the house there, through here, out along here, and then you have the main sewer line here. Assalam. These are all goat skins? Goat and snake? Yeah. And crocodile? Yeah. This snake now. This city is officially just blowing my mind to pieces right now. This is so otherworldly, really. <laughs> I've got goosebumps right now. This man just got a lion's head out of his... Wow. Where did you get a lion's head from? Chad. Sorry, what country? Chad Republic. Oh, Chad. And what will you do with this head? With it, we sell it to the people. They sell it to voodoo people. They make voodoo with that. Like black, black magic. magic, yeah. Is that legal? Yeah, we buy them. We have to go to the bathroom. Ah, but ah, can I? Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nagodi. Yeah. Nagodi. Ah, you try, bro. I try. Yeah. <laughs> Traveled to many different places in the world, but this is uh, standing out as one of the most engaging. This is fresh crocodile skin. And wh where does the crocodile skin go? Is it used for making boots? They yeah. export it out of the yeah. country yeah. because it's oh, being yeah. used for mm -hmm. other products. For, for like fashion or for magic? Uh, no, I like Okay. And I'm passing to and I'm okay, it's for passion. Yeah. yeah, for passion use. This is a crocodile's back yes, right yes, here. Yes. Uh-huh. You see the finishing one. So the one we just saw was before and this is after. This is from a python. Mm. One python, wow. And are these snakes caught locally or do the snakes come from far away from here? Ah, uh, it's come from far away. Far away. Yeah. They bring you the whole snake and then you uh -huh. strip it down buy, to the skin. Yeah, we can buy it from their hand. They okay. just bring like 100 pieces. How much for one python? One, uh, this finishing one, it will take at least 10,000. 10,000, but I mean yes. for before? Okay, so it's been measured according to centimeters. So, so the snake? The size of snake mostly like around 5,000 naira. So 10 dollars for one python? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you turn that into 10,000, so you, yeah. do, you double the money? Mm -hmm. so okay. Salam. I don't have words to describe what I'm witnessing right now. I don't think I really need words to describe what I'm witnessing. A lion's head and the snake and the alligator skins. Obviously we see snake boots and alligator boots and things, but just hit, so they were just sitting there having a tea and they had a, a lion's head in their bag. Wow, this is the real deal right here. And here's some more of the, the tanning areas here. And then I think that's sewage in the middle. It's a sight to behold, you know. This is a, another planet. You know, the people are very welcoming and friendly. Assalamu alaikum. He's the chairman. Oh, wow. Nice to meet you. You're the your chairman? I'm the chairman. Oh, wow. My name is Mr. Paul Murphy. Okay. Yeah. And this is a good business? Where are you from? I'm from New Zealand. From New Zealand. Yeah. Okay. And is this good business? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. You run this business? Yes. Wow. 
How long have you been chairman for? For uh, six years. Six years? Six years. Okay. It's uh, very incredible for me to see this. To see the local, our local talent. Yeah, the culture okay. and the talent. Yeah, okay. Because where I come from, this is very different. Okay. You know? I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Thank you for your time. Okay, I wish you good luck. Thank you, you too. Thank you. What kind of meat is this? Sheep skin. Sheep. Sheep, sheep meat. Yeah, sheep. Lamb. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. Yeah. Nagodi. Nagodi. So Mohammed, yeah, you said that uh, you don't really feel too safe in these alleyways here. It's not really here. I don't feel safe, but because it's an alleyway, we are not like many people around us, so it's right. better. Yeah, we don't waste much time here. Right. Yeah. In case of to what? Be, yeah, to be, to be, uh, <laughs> to be in the safer side, right? Right. Yeah. So what kind of threats could there possibly be? Like uh, hoodlums in the sea, in the community, maybe. Hoodlums. Yeah, like to. To, 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 to take our phones or to take our money from okay. us. Yeah. Is that quite common here? Uh, yeah, they, we have them a lot. Yeah, some Yeah, they have them around. Okay. Yeah, who know? We nobody knows, so we can do that around. So it's best to stay in open areas with lots of people. Yeah, it's better. Right. Okay. Yeah. Especially that we are with you. If it's just us, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, because but you I stick out. <laughs> Yeah, you are an attraction to. I'm them, a lighthouse. Right? Exactly. So it's better <laughs> we don't waste much time here. So You've never seen a lion's head before. This right? is my first time. That was crazy, really. What do you think of that? Wow, oh, it was crazy, really. I think this is not really good. Okay. For the. Uh, for the environment and okay. also for us as humans. Okay. Yeah, I think. But quite that's shocking. their business, right? That's quite shocking. But that's their business. That's what they do. Um, even them, they know that it is illegal. So we hope they will stop it in the future. Nagodi. Okay, so mashallah. All right. Mashallah. mashallah. Okay, so this is Khaled, he's kindly driving us around today. You were in the city in 2014 when the mosque attack happened? Yeah, I was in the city. And you told me that you felt the explosion? Yeah, I feel the explosion. And can you describe that? I, I don't know how to describe it because it's too... It's too... I'm too afraid at that time. A series of blasts halted Friday prayers at Kano's main mosque, which was crowded as usual with worshippers. Gunmen then opened fire as people scampered for safety. How far from the mosque were you? Uh, I was too far. And you still felt yeah. the explosion? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's too far. Can you describe the town at that time? Were people running everywhere and when the explosion happened, what was the scene like in the city? The, the city, like two hours after the, the explosion, you just hear nothing in the in the city. Everybody was hiding. Yeah, everybody was hiding. Seven years later, seven, eight years later, and how is the situation now? Now the situation is absolutely normal. Everybody is moving, doing everything. It's normal, the situation now. So you feel a lot safer now than you did then? Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Back then it was more of a, a violent threat that was scary, but nowadays I've heard that it's the economy that's the problem. That was the problem now we have in Nigeria. Okay. The economy problem. So people are struggling to afford to feed themselves? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. And, and what do you think would be the solution to change this in a positive direction? I think it's the solution to solve this problem is to reduce the value of dollar, 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 nera, dollar to to reduce the exchange rate. The exchange rate, yeah. Oh, so, so you think to manipulate the the 
exchange rate back yeah. to 200 naira instead of 500 for one dollar. Yeah, yeah, of course. That would help. Yeah. And is there anything else that you would, would like to share or you're happy? No, I'm happy. You know. <laughs> okay. I'm happy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So as you can see from this video, Nigeria just keeps coming with the surprises. I mean, the things that I saw on this day were, you know, absolutely mind-blowing, as I've said. But there's still more to come in the next video from Nigeria. I was expecting Nigeria to be a lot to take in, but it has far surpassed those expectations. I mean, Nigeria is just constantly pushing the limits and constantly pushing your perception of what you think is possible. And for that, I thank Nigeria so much, and I thank the people for having me in their country and being so hospitable towards me no matter what they have or what they do not have so I'll see you in the next video and in case I don't see you good afternoon good evening and good night I just want to take a quick second and say a huge thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. Curiosity Stream is basically like the documentary version of Netflix. They have thousands of documentaries. There's a few I've been watching lately. One in particular is Butterfly Effect, and it shows you the entire process of how certain things came into play. For example, the invention of the internet in detail, but it's quite small and concise, so you can digest a lot of really interesting information in a short period of time. There's also some really cool travel documentaries on there. What stands out the most about Curiosity Stream is how affordable it is. If you use my link in the description, curiositystream.com forward slash indigo, you'll get 25% off, which will come out to only $14.99 for a whole year. You're basically paying the price of a month of other streaming services, but you get an entire year. Just to put that in perspective, that's just over $1.20 a month. I've already learned a lot on Curiosity Stream and I'll definitely be continuing to watch it. I love sharing a sponsor like this because it's very educational. I can speak for myself, it's definitely given me a greater understanding of the world. So head to curiositystream.com forward slash indigo and you can also use the link in the description.